Hi everybody, uh, my name is Sebastian Sarbora, and I'm CEO and co-founder of Dillion VR. Uh, so the ways in which we interact and control virtual reality and games are currently getting better but not immersive enough, not realistic enough for consumers. Uh, at Illion VR we envision a future where uh, if you're controlling an object in a game, your controller that you're using in real life is as similar as possible to it. It makes your immersive experience much better. And our first step towards that is to develop a realistic controller for uh, shooter games. We're in the middle of a virtual reality revolution. Uh, the market is pushing towards more and more advanced technologies uh, for viewing uh, the virtual world, like the Oculus Rift, products like this, make it so simple and easy to just put on the product and you feel like you're actually in the virtual world. It's almost seamless. But the ways in which we're uh, controlling that, those worlds and interacting with them are uh, lagging behind, such as the keyboard and uh, mouse and the gamepad. These are not immersive, uh, they're too abstract. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, players want to be able to make a motion in a game and have that represented, or make a motion in real life and have that represented in the game. So if you uh, say pick up a gun or something like that, it should be exactly that type of motion. Pushing a keyboard or pressing a button is not realistic enough, it's too abstract. And uh, our goal is to make objects and controllers that fulfill that requirement. Current solutions on the market are uh, not good enough for multiple reasons, mostly because they don't, they're not built, designed from the ground up for virtual reality. They're hacked together systems like, uh, on the left here, uh, Wiimote, uh, that this user's using with a virtual reality headset. And you can see that, while physically this is a pretty good experience because the controller is very similar to the object that's in the game, they're both guns, uh, it's very imprecise. And uh, if he wants to do realistic aiming and realistic uh, you know, motions and things like that, it's not enough. It's not going to uh, satisfy the immersive experience. On the right, we have another device, which is an advanced, uh, a newer controller, much more advanced. It's for tracking your hands for input. And you can see here that it's very precise. He's able to sharpshoot uh, enemies from far away. But the problem is that the motions that he's making are not really, uh, they don't tie well to what's going on in the game. That's not what the player is doing. Just because the user is making those motions, that's not what's going on in the game. And uh, there's really no physical bridge between the virtual world and the real world. There's no object for him to actually feel like he's uh, enacting the actions that are really in there. Uh, this is our solution. So we spent over a year developing technology for virtual rea reality controllers, tracking technology for very precise uh, tracking of controllers. <coughs> it's meant to be paired with devices like the Oculus Rift head mounted display or other similar devices. And uh, our first application for it is a first person shooter, the uh, rifle. The interesting thing about our technology, though, is that it's not specific to the rifle. It can be put in all sorts of different form factors, whether it's a bow and arrow or a tennis racket or something along those lines. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity to go further with that. Uh, actions that happen in the game with this controller are directly correlated to what is going on in the game. So if you want to, in the game, you want to reload or you want to look at a scope or, or you want to <clears throat> feel the recoil. That's all done with the controller. There's no key presses to abstract away from it. You actually are doing those motions and you feel like you're that person. Uh, a bit of background for the market that we have here. Um, in 2014, the global market for video games was valued at $81.7 billion, with gaming accessories and peripherals and controllers uh, accounting for about $32 billion of those dollars. And 20% uh, of the entire game market was dedicated to shooters themselves. So. It's a large, large market. And virtual reality, while it's small right now, is growing and estimated to be $2.3 billion by the end of the year. Um, on the right, we have a pedal chart here that kind of shows where we stand in that market versus our competitors. So um, you have objects like the Wiimote that I showed before, or something like Time Crisis or Duck Hunt, where they're an arcade type game that give that physical, physically immersive experience. Uh, but they're not precise. They don't. They're not realistic and precise enough in their tracking. And you have uh, products like Elite Motion, which is the hand one that I showed earlier, and uh, it's very precise, but doesn't provide that physical experience. So we um, are unique in that we can uh, <coughs> fill those roles. And on the side there, we have uh, licensed peripherals, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, based on the information from the uh, customer interviews that we did, 
uh, we glean the kind of what our target customer is. And this average uh, PC gamer, someone who probably likes shooter games, someone who uh, is probably in the 17 to you know, 32 age range, uh, they love playing first person shooters, but they may not necessarily be technically adept, it may be difficult for them to get into virtual reality because all these systems are hacked together. They need something that's easy to integrate, easy to use. And so um, along with that, we've kind of written software integrations to make it very easy to play uh, video games, your favorite video games, um, from that have already been made, or easy for developers to uh, make video games from the bottom up for our control. Uh, it's, uh, we also realize that it's important to uh, provide more than one physically realistic uh, controller for them because uh, a gun or, or a rifle is not the only type of uh, equipment that may be used in a game. So uh, we branch out to a whole line of standard controllers that are maybe pistols, shotguns, sniper rifles, things like that. Um, and again, the technology is not specific to guns, so we just chose guns because it's the quickest way to get to market and it's most, uh, we think, most viable product. Uh, along with that, we have a great opportunity for uh, licensed controllers. So the idea is People want to play with controllers that are uh, similar to objects or, or things from their favorite movie or video game. So they want to um, play with, say, a Star Wars blaster or a Blade Runner pistol or something from World War II, things like that. This, in our customer interviews, people were so ecstatic about this idea. They really wanted to, um, they, all of these are suggestions that we got, everything that's on this uh, slide here. Um, people really wanted to, uh, integrate with those and along with that we're going to find these uh, companies that make these uh, products, uh, say LucasArts that owns Star Wars uh, stuff or Disney now I guess, and uh, make partnerships with them so we can actually make these controllers uh, for our customers. Currently we're a three person team, we're all third year computer science majors at RPI. Uh, we have a lot of background uh, technology, uh, you know, uh, embedded hardware, machine vision, software, integration, game design, mathematics, things like that, that will help us technically get to uh, where we want to be with our uh, product. But also, we are really passionate about this because we all grew up in the generation that watched the Matrix movies and, and <coughs> played video games for you know, our whole lives and things like that. So um, this is really, we really want to make an impact on the virtual reality market as, it, as new products come out. Uh, as towards our experience together, we have worked together for multiple years, uh, tons of projects together, um, undergraduate research projects together, a lot of hackathons we've gone to, we've done a lot of projects at uh, hackathons have been finalists, and uh, together we all founded Hack RPI, which was a hackathon hosted in uh, this past November. It was very successful, uh, 500 people attended. It was the, one of the larger hackathons in the Northeast. So that kind of gave us skills that we can use for we learned a lot of skills that not necessarily are technical skills that we can use for um, in the future for our company. Uh, over the past year, we've made a lot of steps towards uh, making our product, uh, finding the right market, and bringing that product to that market. So we started out in at a hackathon, uh, HackTech. We were finalists. That's when we created the base technology behind this. But it was for a completely different product, a wearable art device. And so we ended up pivoting to virtual reality controllers. And we designed our first prototype at HackRU, and then continued development forward until where we are today. Uh, recently, in the past couple of months, we've started getting into business model competitions, to, which as a result, we've gotten a ton of customer interviews uh, to go through that process. And uh, at our first uh, business model competition, we won uh, third place. And then Today we are at, we have a fully working prototype, so it's the most important thing, that milestone that we have because all of our technological problems are kind of behind us, all, all of our major ones. The technology is pretty complex, and now that we're past that hurdle, um, we are able to move forward much more quickly. Um, so for our future, we uh, want to start, we want to raise money so we can work over the summer and hire more developers, expand over the, um, the course of the next six months or a year. And um, in the summer, we're going to do a Kickstarter. So the idea is, Kickstarter's been responsible for so many different projects, such as you know the Oculus Rift or other virtual reality projects or video games. They all have become wildly successful because of it. So we think it's the best way for us to get get out into the market, do marketing, um, and to actually you know 
get people who show that they want to get our product, and also for uh, pre-orders and things like that. And then uh, beyond that, we're uh, going to continue to develop and uh, make all these software integrations and uh, so, uh, video games that we want to use uh, work together with. So um, with all of this in our future, we have kind of the basic steps that we need to move forward with our vision for virtual reality. And uh, whether it starts with this product, moves on to all sorts of other product lines and, and things like that. So uh, thank you. VR world, tactile feedback has always been an issue. Yes. I started with VR back in 2001, and it was an issue then, and it remains an issue now. How are you going to how are you going to combat that? What are you going to do? With that? So one particular thing uh, with the gun, the uh, most important part of it, tactile. There's two parts: the form of it, so make sure it fits relatively looks and feels kind of like a regular gun or what would be in the game. And the other is like recoil, things like that. So that's an actual response that you get back from the game. And so making sure that those are relatively realistic um, definitely adds to the tactile experience that you're talking about. Well, the, the, the form factor is almost immaterial because you're wearing goggles and you can't see it. It's the visual experience. It's got to be the weight. It's got to be kind of the way it feels. Uh, as opposed, and getting that recoil and getting the smell, and, you know, those are all important components. I agree 100%. Do you have a sense of how much it's going to cost to produce each unit? So we've, uh, one of the big portions of our, you know, getting more <coughs> teams and stuff like that is to design for manufacture and actually get uh, this out into factories and stuff like that. So we we'll start, so we start preliminarily looking into uh, the, how much the system would cost as a whole. And uh, we're so, we're very early in that process, but uh, there are estimates in the range of like 120 to, you know, $80. And is that a um, reasonable price based on what people market it for? I mean, so there are products like, most of the virtual reality products right now are relatively expensive, like the Oculus Rift goes for $350. Um, there's other products that, kind of like the Wiimote, not exactly the Wiimote, but there's a controller called the Delta 6, which is, Gun controller, it's not very realistic and kind of doesn't, the technology isn't really the same as ours, but they sell for $350, things like that. So we've got much higher value than them, so um, the case we made for the market could accept it at a much higher price point. See, if I understood you right, uh, your customer is really the game manufacturer, right? It's not, it's not the end user. So, no. I would say that. Uh, it's the end user because they buy the controller. <coughs> our key partner is the game manufacturer because we have to go to them and say, uh, here's our product, here's our software team, let us integrate with your game. But then the, in the end, the customer would buy, it, uh, buy the controller and then we would, the software stuff will already be done by, uh, when they're our key partner. And so they buy the controller and then they're able to just plug and play and get into the game. So, so, they have, so the customer has to buy, the end customer has to buy two things, right? Sure, yes. From, from two different, so they buy the game and then they buy? So these are customers who already probably have their, these own games that they like, and <coughs> they just want a more immersive experience in this game. So say they've already bought this game for a long time, but they're stuck using a gamepad or a keyboard and mouse, they want to move on to something uh, much more. And it's not, it's not uncommon for um, companies to do something like this because you have to get, you know, if you buy a, you used to buy an Xbox 360 and then you buy a game and then you get the Kinect and things like that. There's also an opportunity for bundling games potentially um, with the control. Okay, thank you very much.